Like, it's no hold up. We, we both trying to move it's forward. There's no hold up. Okay, so you know why haven't you responded to the letter that what my attorney the sent? There are many misconceptions about professional sports. One of the biggest ones being that once you're in, you're set for life. You're not. And players across many leagues have proven this not to be the truth. In the NBA, there are many big name contracts, but in truth, just as many players end up homeless or broke because of various circumstances. Allow us to show you some of these players. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. This is the time before here. Oliver Miller, luckily, came down, just grazed Todd Fuller. Eight, Oliver Miller. Miller is best remembered for his time with Toronto, where he put up career highs in points per game, 12.9, and total rebounds, 7.4, in 2005. Nicknamed the Big O because he weighed well over 300 pounds, Miller played on five different teams throughout his nine seasons in the NBA and also spent time in leagues in Greece, Poland, China, and Puerto Rico. Does this mean he was a failure of a player? Hardly. It just meant that he wasn't good enough to stay in one place for a long period of time, which has happened to many decent players over the years. However, things went south for him once his playing days ended in 2010. In 2011, he was charged with a first degree and second degree assault, reckless endangerment, possession of a handgun, using a handgun in a violent crime, possessing a handgun in a vehicle, and disorderly conduct. He pled guilty later that year and was sentenced to a year in county jail with five years probation. Sadly, this is another misconception about the league, that players are above such things. They're not. They're human like the rest of us, and as such, they fall prey to certain temptations. Nitty, Steven Jackson, Curry, offensive rebound, up over McDonald, four early points for the killer three. Seven, Eddie Curry. Eddie Curry was touted as being something special from the moment he got on the court. He was drafted fourth overall out of high school. The seven foot tall, 300 pound native of Illinois was posed to be the next Shaquille O'Neal. And if he lived up to that hype, his legend would have written itself out rather easily. But things didn't work out as planned for him as he was out of the league almost as fast as he was in it. He put up a few good seasons points wise with the Bulls and the Knicks, but he wasn't as good as advertised and was all but finished by the age of 25, which is heartbreaking to see with someone who had all of that talent. When he was done with the NBA, Curry has found himself in hot water on more than one occasion. In 2009, while still in the NBA but seeing hardly any playing time, he was accused of heinous acts by his driver. Things would only get worse from there as Curry's house was foreclosed in 2009 due to over $200,000 in unpaid mortgage bills. So you see, even a heavy favorite in the draft to make something of himself turned out to be a bust. Which is why draft night is one of hopes and desires, but not necessarily sure things. It also should be noted that a few years after Curry was drafted out of high school, the NBA made sure that couldn't happen again, after LeBron, of course. And you have to wonder what it would have been like if he had gone to college to refine his skills first. You know, like Shaq did. Six, Latrell Spruill. By the late 90s, Latrell Spruill's name had become synonymous with trouble, which is not something that inspires confidence in people. Despite being a talented player, averaging over 18 points per game throughout his career and being named to four all-star teams, he simply couldn't fight his own destructive nature. As such, he was constantly battling the league for his actions on and off the court. Again, not something that inspires confidence. Things didn't improve when he left the league. You could even say it got worse. Shortly after his retirement in 2005, Spruill found himself in legal trouble, beginning with the repossession of his yacht in 2007 as a result of over $1 million in unpaid bills. He then lost his home to foreclosure in 2008 after failing to make mortgage payments. During a practice in 1997 with the Golden State Warriors, Spruill infamously choked his coach, PJ Carl Simo, and was accused of doing the same thing to a woman a decade after that. There's a difference between being a bad man on the court and being a bad man in life. Latrell was definitely a bad man, and he paid the price for it. You know, I done sat home for seven months, expecting my first child, man, I'm still... Five, Delonte West. 
At just 32 years of age, Delonte West, who was drafted in the first round out of St. Joseph's and played for the Boston Celtics, the Seattle Supersonics, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Dallas Mavericks, has already hit rock bottom. West was in the news after photos appeared online supposedly showing him begging for money on the streets of Maryland. It is believed by some that he had become homeless and is suffering from schizophrenia. West, however, denies the rumors and says that he was merely helping a homeless man. This isn't the first time that West has made news for his behavior. However, in 2009, he was arrested after he was pulled over and found to be carrying several guns, including a shotgun in a guitar case. As you can see, sometimes the life of an NBA player comes crashing down after they've left the league. This is part of the reason why people try so hard to get fame or at least be consistent enough to keep playing so that they won't have to be in this position. Regardless of where he is now, it's sad to see how far West has fallen. It wasn't so much of the NFL. It was more of proving everybody wrong. Honestly, I never truly realized that I'm different. I just accepted who I am. Four, Derek Coleman. Despite having the potential to be a perennial all-star, Former first round pick Derek Coleman was only an above average power forward in the NBA, making just one all-star team, which usually would be enough for some, but clearly not enough to save him from what was going to happen. He played for New Jersey Nets and the Philadelphia 76ers in his best season. He averaged a respectable 16.5 points per game throughout his career to go along with 9.3 rebounds per game, which again would have made him a good player in the eyes of some as those points and rebounds add up over the course of a season. However, Coleman didn't do himself any favors by making ill-advised investments. How so? Well, usually when you hear bad investments, you think of a company that went belly up. But for Coleman, he invested in an entire city. A large portion of his career earnings went down the drain when he tried to jumpstart the Detroit economy by investing in developments in communities throughout the city. His attempts, while admirable, were largely a failure, and he would go on to file for bankruptcy, claiming to owe nearly $5 million to between 50 and 99 creditors. This is another side effect of being NBA famous, because he had $100 million to his name and felt he could change the world in the ways that mattered, which is noble, but sometimes money can't fix everything, as he learned the hard way. Detroit is still not what it once was, and now Coleman is suffering alongside it. Like, There's no hold up. We, we both trying to move There's forward. There's no hold up. Okay, so you know why haven't you responded to the letter that what my attorney sent? Three, Eric Williams. Eric Williams played in the NBA from 1995 to 2007, and usually that would mean that he had a journeyman career and remained relevant enough to keep the money flowing and his game a-going. In fact, his best year came during the 1996-1997 season when he put up 15 points per game as forward for the Boston Celtics. But it obviously didn't last as he went broke and homeless after making $40 million in his career and then he went on Basketball Wives Miami and not in a good way. He got into an argument with his ex-wife Jennifer Williams and threw a drink in her face, which is not tolerable in the slightest and the other cast members ran to Williams' defense. Tammy Roman, ex-wife of former NBA player Kenny Anderson, said on the news that Williams was broke and homeless, which was no doubt something he didn't want to be revealed to the world. That's another dark side of fame, as you feel the need to do something, anything to get back in the spotlight, but that was not the way to go, obviously. Um, how'd you think about your team, how they do tonight? I mean, I think they did really good, man. I think they fought. Uh, it was really good to come down here and play against a high level um, prep school like this. Um. Two, David Harrison. With just four seasons in the NBA, Former first-round draft pick David Harrison had the shortest career of anyone we've listed here, which is a sad thing in its own right. Drafted in 2004, he was out of the league by 2008 and on the other side of the world playing in Beijing, which is a bigger basketball market than you might think, but not as big as the NBA, obviously. He played in China until 2012, at which point he came back home to play in the D-League for the Reno Bighorns. To further cement his status, Harrison was featured in an ESPN documentary entitled 30 for 30, Broke, wherein he described his struggles after the NBA, claiming to have worked the night shift at McDonald's just to make ends meet. But there is a happy ending in this tale, as he now works in stock trading and hopes to be able to go back to finish his degree at University of Colorado. One. Dennis Rodman Dennis Rodman's life is a tale of inspiration and tragedy. 
On one hand, he rose up from almost literally nothing to find basketball and get drafted to the Detroit Pistons, won two titles with them, and then went on to play with Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen to win three more titles further cementing him as one of the greatest to ever play. But as much as Rodman played hard, he also partied hard. Way too hard, even. He would spend money faster than you can imagine, and when the last dance happened with the Bulls, Rodman was soon out of the league, out of a job, and still spending money. He's admitted his faults in life and wishes he did better, and that's good, but his freefall was legendary, and most stars and hopefuls hope that they don't end up like him. So what did you think? What did you think of these players who went broke or went broke so bad that they were basically homeless? Can you believe that it happened to a lot of NBA players who were so full of life and ability at one point in time? Do you know another example of a player who went homeless or broke that could be on this list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel. Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple.